Hello everyone and welcome to A Block or Artist Block, which is the longer form of the term. Um, it's nice to uh, it's nice to have you guys joining me. My name is Noodle Dog. You might also know me as Yilverex on my Twitter. Um, this is a tutorial based um, tutorial based video um, series, and it's going to do mainly cover a couple of other things like uh, art in general. So. First of all, we'll kind of go back a bit and we'll talk about myself before we get on. So, uh, like I said, my name is uh, Noodle Dog. You can call me whatever. Um, I have a couple of uh, f accounts on uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, all stuff like that. I'll link it eventually. Um, and I am a mixed media artist. So, if I do painting, I do sculpture, I do digital art, I do animation every now and again, though that's really annoying, so I don't do it very often. Um, I think I said it, but I do sculpture, uh, ceramic, I work with prints. Um, I work on, um, I do uh, dry point, uh, solar plate, I do screen printing, the works. I'm just a general multimedia artist. And one thing about that is I often try to give people uh, suggestions on how to go forth, but some people don't know where to start when it comes to art, so I thought this little series would be a good way to help everybody out. So, um, let's just start facts. So, you want to be an artist. That's the cool thing. You want to be an artist, but in order to get to that place, you gotta you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start with why you want to be an artist, and you kind of want to start with, uh, you know, the basics. I want to be an artist because I want uh, I want to do it for money, or maybe I just want to do it for fun, or maybe I just want to make it a professional thing. There's a, there's a whole slew of reasons why anybody would want to be an artist, and that's perfectly understandable. Um, finding yourself and what you want to do will definitely help um, your motivation, and it'll figure out you'll figure out rather how you want to progress as you go forward now being an artist can be kind of uh, challenging because you know you start off small or maybe you have you know the talent that you really want to give out to the world um all of that is really important i just uh, if you heard that i actually hit i have a really big fan next to my desk and um i hit it with my elbow so so don't mind me um and so when it comes to being an artist you kind of want to set down a couple of things you want to First, establish why you want to be an artist. Um, you also want to, to uh, discuss your motivation. You want your motivation to be an, a crucial and important thing um, about your overall meaning. So, when it comes to your motive, why are you doing it? Do you want to be an artist for profit? Do you want to be a hobbyist? Do you want to be whatever? Whatever that is, you want to kind of put that and pin that to your little dashboard. And you want to kind of do that um, pretty much every day. Because if you don't, that motivation will drop off. And then you'll kind of just turn it into something less than nice. You might just throw it away and you'll just never work with your art again. So you want to figure that out first. And it's really important that you do because it'll definitely help you in the long run. And it'll kind of ground you. So if anything shakes you, you just kind of stay turtled up and you stay protected. Um, I can I can tell you my story because my story is kind of relevant to you know the artist thing, and maybe it'll kind of give you an idea of what's been going on with uh, well not what's been going on rather what uh, why I chose to be an artist. So we're gonna have to go a couple years. It's probably been about five or so years since I've been doing art seriously. I've always drawn as a kid, but um, being in a house where my father was a lawyer my stepmother was a um, gynecologist and my mother was an English teacher I for the most part didn't really um, I didn't really show off my art a whole lot because my dad was usually busy with lawyer work and he didn't really think of anything that wasn't um, going to make inherent money and nobody else really paid attention to it except for my mom my mom didn't really uh, know anything about me being an artist until I got a little bit older but we'll get to that so I've been drawing um, regularly, drawing in general, coming up with ideas and characters for the past, uh, mm, I'd say the past 18 years. I'm 22 now, and I've been doing this for a pretty long time. Um, however, um, I went to college, and after a while I decided I'd do the art thing in secret. Uh, I went to school for computer science, and I go to a pretty big school. Keep in mind, this school is a really big um, science-based school so all the chemistry the biology the pre-farm pre-med all that stuff is very relevant and 
I was going for computer science. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying oh in this video a whole lot, but um, I found that the scripts are actually kind of hard to follow. So I'm just going to kind of follow a loose guideline of a, a bunch of things that we have. So I decided that I wanted to be a computer science major, but found out that the art thing wasn't going to really help me with that because I was doing a lot of coding. I was going to do a lot of coding. I uh, was going to do a lot of, uh, how you say, how you say it? Hold on, it's escaping me. Math, there we go. I'm not a good math student. I'm a better science student than I am math, which is a very strange anecdote, but we'll, we'll, kind, of, we'll kind of push that to the side. But I want to be a computer scientist, but I didn't really want to be a computer scientist. It sounds cool because you can make your own games, you can code things, you can develop things that you really want to do. Like, uh, you know, you might want to do ATM uh, banking. <laughs> you might do simple ATM programs or a thing like that when you do school. You might want to work on software, that kind of thing when you get older. And uh, that kind of thing really is interesting, but my heart wasn't really set into it. And the only way to really kind of uh, keep myself sane was drawing. I did a lot of drawing in like a little sketchbook. I even bought like a little blue tiny sketchbook that I don't know where it is. To, to this day, I don't know where it is. But um, I would draw on it and that ended up being my big thing. And so that happened. I drew a lot more and then I started taking it seriously because I just kind of felt maybe, just maybe I could just draw well enough and we'll see where it goes. From there, I remember very fondly that my first semester I did horribly. I mean, pretty bad. I got failed. This is the first time I've ever failed a class, and I did a pretty bad job. I got a got a failing grade in uh, general general math. It was kind of like that uh, college algebra thing where it's like <laughs> for the students that aren't good at math, they take that class. Not even like a 101 class. I was in that class because I, was, I wasn't good with math. Math has never been my strong suit. And so um, I decided that along with my next semester, I'd do better, but I'd take an art class and I'd see how I like it. So I took a ceramics class. I took a hand building class where I learned how to make uh, creatures and other things out of clay. I had a teacher and she uh, she worked with me for a while and after I my first project I was all hands in I mean I was like just molding clay I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff and I found that the best thing about that was that I was making things and that I was the one who was in control I made a my first project was like really complicated I actually have it on my well I don't see it it's it's probably in my uh, my closet but I made a really big rabbit I was looking off to my my dad my dresser and usually it's on top of my dresser but I made a really big rabbit and um, when she when she complimented me on it on how complex it was for my first project I felt really really good about it and in fact it kind of set in motion the whole reason for being an artist I wanted to be an artist but my parents were my parents mainly my dad was like no it's out of the question he wouldn't let me write he wouldn't let me draw because he felt as if it wouldn't make any money and my dad's a lawyer so you know being very mercurial um was a big thing for him and so having money was important and he kind of just pushed it away and here i am in an art class and i got a b i was a point away from an a actually and i did a really good job on that and i was very happy with what i did i found out then that i didn't really want to be a programmer not fully and so I decided that I'd be an artist. I went home the next, um, during the break, and then I broke news to my dad. And of course he was aggravated by it, but my mom gave me support and that was the only thing I really needed. So my mom supported me through the whole, through the whole of it. And I moved to drawing one and a bunch of other things. So at that point I was an okay. I was mediocre at best doing art. And here I am jumping into an art program and I get kind of just kind of just jumped into it without even without even any recommendations without looking at a portfolio or anything like that. I just kind of like slid into the art department. And uh, to be honest, I don't know how they I don't know how they missed that. They really just kind of let me in. I don't know what happened. I think they strict and they strict. They they got more strict recently, where they started doing um, portfolio checks. But other than that, that's that's about it. Keep in mind, this is still like uh, chemistry and 
biology related school so they're they're not going to be super 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 hard on you but they do want some talent and they do want some they do want something of your ac- acumen before you go in anyway flash forward to about now <laughs> um i'm a junior going on a senior right now and i have had to take a couple of uh time couple couple of semesters off so i can actually work and actually gain the skills that i needed to but i kind of always kept to the artist thing and i felt that it was the best thing to do <sighs> a lot of times you get tested and you get pushed and you get rocked from side to side and you always, always, always have to hold on to your motivation. I said all of that to make the point that if uh, if you decide that you want to be an artist, if you want to decide that this is what you want to do, you have to do it. You just got to go for it. If you feel like this is what you want to do, if you feel like you can do it, even if it's just a hobby, you're going to have to go for it and you're going to have to hang on because art will crush you sometimes. You're not always going to get the, all the likes you want on your favorite pieces. You may not always get the uh you may not always get like hundreds of comments or whatever i, I still i still only get like two comments per per thing i'm a relatively small base but the, i say that all to say you really really just kind of want to move at your own pace you want to not get discouraged and you want to figure out and hold on to where you come from because that will define you at your darkest and deepest moments now that was a lot of an aside so i'm gonna move on to the next thing so we talked about your motivation you want to kind of get that in place and then of course the other side of that is the work ethic you want to be really 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 reliable with your work ethic and your workflow um you want to be um you want to make sure that your workflow is super tight because sometimes that in and of itself if it's not tight enough or if it's not if it's not uh at the at the place that you want it to It'll be frustrating. You could throw things away. You get angry and you don't want to do it. Art is a lot like a sport. You're going to have to uh, come in with a base level of understanding. And you're going to want to have to go from point to point. Uh, each each individual um, image that you work on, you want to look at it. And you want to look at what you're doing from your first picture to your most recent picture. And say, how did I improve? A lot of times people get upset because your improvement may not seem huge which is why it's also important to get a second opinion actually um a lot of times second opinions are really important because they help you see what you as the artist can't see um i did something earlier today actually where i was telling some students at a painting class and i told them that a lot of times second opinion is important because you're focusing on the artist's perspective but a lot of times you forget that while you may be the artist and while you interpret it one way a whole wealth of people are going to interpret something else and it's a good idea to get your views uh, checked by some other person and be open to those views. A good way that you might want to also think about is practicing, carrying a sketchbook at hand, and just kind of like doodling. You want to do this all the time. Um, you want to make sure that you also stick to your uh, yourself. You can kind of branch out and do other things that you might want to do poses based off of other characters or other things like that and that's perfectly fine poses are cool you could also if you're starting out and you like something that somebody else has done it's really pleasing to the eye you could kind of take that and you could push it to something else that does happen too i mean a lot of times if uh you like something like maybe you like the eye structure somebody works on or maybe you like the clothing that somebody does and you want to try it for yourself you can try it you could try it but you don't want to become a clone of somebody else because what ends up happening is that you don't find yourself in the style and you end up basically breaking down your your own things and you kind of just become just a complete copy. You don't want that. You want to be yourself. You want to be your own person. So try to think of it like that. Um, like I said, carry a sketchbook at all times. You might want to... Uh, spend some time every day like maybe an hour or 30 minutes even or even five minutes and you might want to just kind of sit there and draw something and it could just be marks on a paper it really doesn't have to be a whole complex uh, composition with like trees and a person sitting in the trees or whatever it could literally just be some circles you want to try to just kind of get something on the paper even if you're suffering through an art block because a lot of times you find that you i hit my head on something Sorry about that. 
um, you may want to work on uh, just simple things. Your simple forms are what will save your life when it comes to bigger and better things. You'll find that the more you have fun with your practice, your practice will become a habit and your habits will become what your finished pieces become. Pieces. Pieces become. You have to, you got to work to that. And you have to make sure that if you're not, if you're, if you're working toward it, that you know, you really, you understand that you're changing. You're just going to always have one thing that you do whatever of. And eventually you will find something that you may like. And it may not be what you want it to be at first, but you want to accept what comes to you. Because you never know. Sometimes that might really be the thing that's for you. Now, now we go to the final bit of this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do and, you know, explain different means of art production. When you want to be an artist, you might want to think about, you know, what kind of medium you want to work in. And like I said, I work in pretty much anything I can get my hands on. I've worked in paint, I've worked in digital, I've worked in graphite, uh, charcoal, metal, uh, wood, I've worked with prints, I've done screen printing, I've done animation, I've done I've done the works, I've done a, quite a bit, and I, I want to get to the point where I'm, I eventually become a jack of all trades. It's the kind of thing that I want to do. Sometimes this stuff is kind of, you know, hard. If you're interested in, you know, getting dirty or you don't mind getting dirty and you kind of just want to make things, you might like sculpture, you might like ceramics. If you like, um, if you like pigments and you like oils or you might like mediums and stuff like that, you might like paint because paint's really fun. The only problem with paint, personally, is that it dries. Um, I have to work on some paints now so they're actually in my room, they're set up. Um, you may want to consider doing animation or you may want to consider doing digital art or design or anything like that because we have computers now computers are really high tech nowadays and they're super 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 helpful when it comes to pretty much anything like that you can pretty much emulate any Ugh. excuse me oh <sighs> had a burp um <laughs> you may want to do any uh you may want to work on anything like that. Um, okay, sorry. I wanted to kind of space out because I had a bit of an episode for a second. And you kind of want to just, you know, work on your on what you really want to. If there's something that you really feel like is going to call out to you, that might be the thing you're interested in. And you're going to want to dive into it head first. Um, you know, take criticism wherever you can. Get constructive feedback. Take all the help you can get. Get as much as you can out there. You really, 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 really want to make sure that you're working your best and everything will eventually fall in place. So from that point, I'm just going to say this and what we're going to be focusing on for the next video. I can't really, I don't have a camera, so I can't really show my workflow as far as like paint or uh, sculpture or the other things like printmaking, which is a little bit more involved. It's a traditional form of art where I have to pretty much set up a, a tripod and a camera and work on something. What I will do though, is I'll do digital stuff, which in transparently copy, photocopy, some of my other stuff, like my traditional art and for my sketchbook and we'll go over some basics the next video i am going to do is going to be focusing on the drawing aspect of art i'm going to be doing digital art for everybody so if you guys feel like you can follow along cool we're working we'll be talking about the materials you need um, what kind of things you could expect and from probably some frequently asked questions by everybody and we'll jump right into it so that's the end of the video. I really hope that you enjoyed this little rambling segment. We're gonna to try to make it a little bit more streamlined for people who don't uh, who don't like the mumbling or what have you. We're gonna figure that out. I'm not really good with scripted videos. I tried the scripted stance. It did not work well at all. It didn't work at all. And I think that's actually a good thing because when it comes to my drawing and stuff like that, it probably won't be scripted. It probably would be unedited. So don't worry about that. Point being, if you like this video, please like it. I really appreciate any, any support you may have, any feedback you may have. And if you want to see the next video, please subscribe. Check out my channel, my all my social media. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all later. Bye strangers. Good luck out there.